Hey, what's up, guys? Avenged here, and uh, welcome back to my Bloodborne Let's Play. Now, this isn't a live commentary because I recorded two episodes doing Kanehurst Castle, and I, um, for some reason, my audio wasn't recording. So, I'm just gonna be doing an um, uh, over commentary, like an overdubbing of my video. And here, I'm showing you um, the Kanehurst Summons key item because when you go to Yusefia's Clinic for the first time and you go to the bed where you spawned in when you first started the game that is waiting for you and after you get that Kanehurst summons you can start you can go to Kanehurst whenever you want but uh, I think it's best to be a, a bit of a late game area because the fact that you can get bloodstone chunks there kind of shows the fact that you should go there late game in the area so so if this is a bit awkward because I literally just recorded this session and I found out that my audio wasn't recording so that's awesome so uh, clear out all the enemies if you can because it makes this better because apparently uh, if you go to this obelisk and activate the horses and uh, you jump, you get into the carriage, the um, dogs and enemies around the area can attack the horses and kill them and it could glitch the area I was told when I read online so I just made sure to kill all the enemies. It's best to just do that. I did it uh, off camera so you wouldn't have to watch me kill a bunch of enemies. Uh, sorry if I'm talking over the cutscenes and everything like that. It's just, you know, trying to get everything done and said. So, uh, uh, yeah, you go into the carriage, you ride over the cane hearst. Uh, I'll still try and keep quiet for most cutscenes, but nothing's really being said here, so. Um, <laughs> just a, um, uh, yeah, this is a bit awkward for me because literally I just recorded this live session so uh, I don't even know what the heck I'm going to be doing. Talking for uh, 24 minutes basically just about what's going on here. It's going to be interesting. Um, I'll try and do my best to uh, to um, be as informative as, as it was during the game when I was doing this. You're going to like the next episode when I actually do the boss fight because he... Uh, he kind of uh, mopped the floor with me a few times before I was finally able to kill him, so that's going to be fun for you guys to watch. Uh, I actually had to download a actual video editing software and an audio recording software just so I can get this done and see if I can actually get it done. Hopefully it works out. Um, so here is Kanehurst Castle, a uh, very uh, medieval, medieval uh, looking area. So just to uh, uh, talk about stuff that can be on my mind now since I'm not having to worry about the gameplay actually. So as soon as you enter this door, there's going to be a lantern to your left. You're going to want to activate that obviously. And then, uh, oh my screen's kind of messing up on my TV. But uh, yeah, the door's going to open for you. Over to your left, there's going to be a lantern. First things first, what you're going to want to do is you're going to see me walk behind this building. Uh, on the other side of the wall here and this is going to be a shortcut to the boss by the way when you get there but on the other side of the wall there's uh, going to be uh, a cold blood so it's more blood echoes now you see those uh, weird blood sacky pale things now you're going to want to try and fight these things one at a time like I have, like I was these things uh, kind of give me a bit of a hard time here it's just that they, um, if you're a Dark Souls player and um, because it's not really a thing here, but it's still something you call. Uh, if you are able to tank hits while still being able to attack, which isn't really a thing in this game, um, it's called poise in the Dark Souls games. And these things outpoise the hell out of you if you attack them from the front. So always try to get off to the side and hit them from behind. Don't try and get them from like directly from behind because they can do like a backwards buck kick. So uh, try and get him from the side and everything, make him turn around to you. Try not to hit him from the front too much. I try here and I get smacked around by a few of them. But always try to single them out. They can do a jump, uh, a pouncing jumping attack. Uh, I think it hits me once and I'm all, and, well, I was really surprised by it early on. But you see that? They take a lot of damage. I was hitting them from the front and he still attacked me. So it was pretty irritating. Um... So you got a nummy mist right there. You're gonna want to come down here. They, I absolutely hate this area with a passion. So there's gonna be another one of the crawly dudes over here. I mean, I can't remember. I think they're called blood suckers. I honestly, because that's what they do. They they just drink blood. If you look at the sack on their uh, their abdomen, their belly. Uh, look, 
Look at this like relentless attack this thing gave me. Like I'm glad I didn't get hit by all the attacks. I like literally this is the first episode I came back to uh, after several days I'm not playing because I can only record whenever my wife is at work or somewhere else or when um, I'm by, basically when I'm by myself because everything is in the living room here. So uh, you're gonna hear a lot of background noise and stuff like that, and it's kind of re awkward recording when somebody's in the room. Now these freaking worms, these stupid tapeworm thingies, are giving me such a hard time here. Oh my god, I was getting really irritated on the live commentary you should have heard me but luckily you only have to go through these guys you come through more spawn it's just the fact that your weapon tends to like not want to hit them because of the way they they move and um i think they they bring my health down quite a bit here I, you have to use a lot of blood vials against them but uh, you only have to come down here once nothing important well uh, a blood gem is down here and i think it's actually an upgrade for my weapon so i'm glad i went down here but you're gonna want to grab it and you see you can you can avoid them but I also was trying to get as many blood echoes as I can because I um, there's, a gu there's a gun I'm gonna be getting here later on in this area where it's called the Evelyn you need 18 blood tinge to be able to use it but it's a really good gun it's my preferred gun that I use so I want to get at least 18 in my blood tinge um, I haven't really been showing you guys off screen what I've been leveling basically I leveled my my uh, my vitality to 40 my basically my health and then I, I leveled up my um, my stamina to uh, 34 I believe just so I can you know be, since I'm using a heavier weapon it takes a lot more stamina to be able to use each hit and I wanted to if I went to my great sword mode I wanted to be able to get consistent hits and kill enemies without having to stop too often and here like I said you want to single these guys out I shot them and then he's just going to be jumping and I think no, that's not the one that hits me. But um, uh, and then I, uh, the weapon I want to be using, that I want to basically use uh, in the base game, the uh, Ludwig's Holy Sword is the one that I've been using throughout the game. Very good weapon, um, but the one I'm more interested in using and the one I really like to use is in the DLC, which I'm not going to be... Um, it's going to be... One of the, not, not one of the last things I do because basically I'm going to be fighting every in-game boss except the last one and then I'm going to be doing the DLC because the bosses in the DLC are pretty hard. Uh, the last boss and the first boss um, mainly. Um, the optional one is can be difficult if you're, you know, you, I, I know a lot of people who've had a hard time with it that have played it. I myself have had a hard time with him but um yeah, in the DLC, you get a weapon early on, and it's a really cool weapon. Uh, people who play Bloodborne probably know which one I'm talking about since I'm using a strength build. But um, basically, I'm sitting at 18, um, at 17 skill, 18 strength, and by the end of this episode, I think uh, when I level up, I use, um, or not this episode, but next episode, when I level up, I end up with 10 blood tinge. So I'm just going to be putting more points in the blood tinge right now. Seems kind of, kind of dumb for considering like I'm almost at end game, but uh, I might think about that more often. I did end up leveling it up with a bunch of blood chunks though, so I'm gonna need blood chunks when I get my uh, <laughs> my weapon. But it should be fine. Even if I have to farm for blood chunks, I'm going to. But um, uh, so like I said, I've, I've been singling. Yeah, they're right there. I didn't expect that one to hit me. I should have dodged, but still. Um, like I said, I've been. You want to single these guys out, and they give you a lot of blood echoes. These guys, I'm not sure if they drop anything. I don't think any of them drop stuff for me while I was doing this, but they give you 2,500 with the the moon rune you get naturally through the game. So if you need to farm for blood echoes, which I might have to later, if I don't do the nightmare of Mensis right away, um, but uh, which I'm not going to because I got another optional area after the uh, area of Kanehurst, and um, but uh, so you want to take this guy out, just whatever. And then you're going to have a lot of blood clots or uh, cold bloods around the, in this um, in these guys. You know, a lot of extra blood echoes to level up. That's good. So um, now this door is going to open on your own. So when you go to, I, I think when I go to an, uh, an item in here, you need to do something to activate these these, la these um, ghost ladies. 
Uh, it's either if you go to a chest over in the far right corner, which you're going to see me grab. I just decided to kill this thing because you never know what's going to come after you. I don't think they come after you. Huh. Anyway, so I'm going to go and grab this item and then all the ghost ladies are going to spawn in. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of screaming. Oh, I actually get pretty annoyed with the uh, screaming in this place. But yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of crying too. It's pretty annoying. But uh, so uh, me, I don't have to clear out these areas. But like I said, they give you 500 blood echoes a kill. So uh, like I said, you know, I just want to level up as much as I can. You know, people might say you're, you're over leveling. Uh, but me, I try not to farm. Like I'm trying not to farm off camera because I want this to be more of a natural playthrough, I guess. I had to farm for blood echoes off screen because of the uh, Crow of Canehurst giving me such a hard time. But... I didn't get a lot of blood echoes from those guys because it was early game enemies. Um, so, I want this to be more of a natural playthrough as I go through. Um, so I don't want to have to farm for blood echoes because, you know, if I if I show you all the things that I kill and all the people, uh, you know, like, you should be able to be the same level I am, basically. I don't want to level too much off screen so I'm over leveled and then you're having a hard time with an area because and you don't know why oh that is the I don't even know how to pronounce it the rider splash like it's uh and around this area in my live commentary I said that this in this um area this is where you want to get a lot of your skill base and blood tinge weapons I think the rider splash is also blood tinge I can't remember but uh I also said here that if you're running a skill build and you want a decent weapon and you don't care about stamina regeneration uh, Eileen the Crow, when you first meet her, there's a. Uh, you might want to look it up on YouTube because I've never done it because I don't usually run skill builds. But Eileen the Crow, uh, there's a way to like easily kill her and then you can get her crow daggers off of her or you can get her badge or just. Yeah, yeah, I think you can get her badge and then you can buy the crow daggers off of. Um, there's a bloodstone chunk there. Uh, you can buy the crow daggers out of the shop so if you're running a skill build that's the way but the rider splash I believe is also a skill weapon um yeah I, I was playing really off today like I said uh I don't know why I've been playing Dark Souls 1 for like the last couple days so uh, you figure I'd be like in the Soulsborne place but Bloodborne is such a different play style um it's more aggressive and stuff and I was playing a pretty pass uh, passive character Oh, in my in my Dark Souls one playthrough. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's kind of um, getting used to recording and everything like that is a bit exhausting. That's why I only do a few episodes at a time. So once you grab this item, you're gonna get surrounded by ghost ladies. Fight your way out of the room. So um, like I said before, uh, I kill all the enemies in order to get as many blood echoes as I can. But uh, in order to get as many as I am right now, the moon room that you get naturally through the game if uh, you saw my episodes where I grabbed it I can't exactly remember where I grabbed it but once you get it and you equipped it the moon rune gives you more echoes per kill huh. so I've had that equipped this entire time so um, just uh, if you want to level up quicker you want to be able to get more money to buy more stuff from the shops like um, fire paper or bolt paper or anything like that uh, you get the noble dress in that chest. That is the dress that the hooker in the chapel is wearing, actually. So, And uh, up here, you're going to come across our first gargoyle enemies. Uh, if you try and walk past this middle part, he's going to jump out at you. He's going to try to grab you. Don't let them grab you because, you know, grab attacks tend to do, you know, they take a while and they do damage, you know, more damage than you'd like them to do. They're pretty weak, though. They have about... Huh. 900 something health so if uh, he's gonna come down you want to get him no you're gonna see me no uh, I, can't, I can't exactly remember how much these guys give you per kill uh, it is oh you get a thousand and one with a boom uh, a moon rune that's pretty good so I'm gonna come out here I'm gonna charge attack him from behind it's gonna kill him there you go 900 see they have at least 986 health so uh, you run down here You're going to uh, see another gargoyle right there. You just want to kind of want to bait them out. Make sure they don't jump out and grab you. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> no. Yeah, give it a kill. And I'm not sure if they drop anything. If you see me kill something and I run around it, it's because I'm trying to grab an item and see if it does. 
these guys can be pretty quick. They use rapiers, like little pokey swords. And I'm surprised when I did this because I actually caused, like, having to kill that guy in four hits. I don't know what it is. Same thing with Dark Souls 3 when you kill the little thrall enemies with the little, with the t tiny pointy hats. Like witch hats. No, no, the little masks. They, they take so much hits, I don't know why. And here, I tried to bait just one of them out to come after me because they do like a sonic breath attack. And then I was just like, you know what? Enough of this. Oh, sorry. I don't know why I'm yawning so much. But I just went YOLO. Oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. Oh, wow. Anyway, so I just went uh, ham on them. I said, fuck it. And this guy confused me, so I was like, what are you doing? So I punch him, and he falls off the edge. <laughs> there you get the Executioner garb. That is the stuff that uh, Executioner Alfred is wearing. And that's the guy who tells you uh, this story about the about Bergen with and the Vile Bloods. You're going to be seeing him later on in the uh, next episode. But here we got more uh, stabby ladies. Um, over to my left, if you saw over there, that is the shortcut. But I believe in this area, I'm going to be killing everything first in this bottom floor before I decide to grab everything. There's going to be a guy over to your right on some on these little stairs. He's a, he fires blow darts at you. Now, to be honest, when these ladies yell at you and you get caught in it, there's like a red um, a red symbol on the back of your head, if you see. I don't know what that does. I, I, I assume it means you take more damage from them. But, uh, yeah, you see this dude. You know, I'm going to kill this lady. He just fires darts at you. He's really annoying, especially when you want to run to fight the boss after. He can be a really annoying enemy. But uh, just get rid of them. Take out the uh, dark dude. Huh, what the heck? Why am I yawning so much? Yeah, because he's just going to keep like pestering you and everything. Oh, Yeah, kill this last lady over here. A lot of crying, a lot of screaming in this area. It actually got pretty annoying after a while. So I kill everything. You're going to run over here. Activate the... Uh, or grab the chest and I blew... Oh, nope, nope. I decided to actually go for the Evelyn. So what you want to do in order to get the uh, the Evelyn uh, pistol, you want to run up the stairs, jump, and get to this chest. That's the only way to get in there, I believe. The Evelyn. I uh, I think I tried to put it on in this moment, but I wasn't able to... I needed 18 blood tinge, like you said. And you actually need 9 strength and 11... Oh, skill. Wow. What the heck is going on? Why am I yawning so much? Oh, maybe it's because I'm not playing a game to keep me focused. Oh, boy. I got another episode to um, record after this, so that's going to be fun. So, as you see over there, Vile Blood Registry it just gives you like um, a look on anyone who joins the Vile Bloods, how many blood drags they've uh, offered to the queen of uh, the Vile Bloods. So, here you are. There's the uh, lantern you opened up the first area you're in the game, so just walk out there a little bit because for some reason if you, uh, I've had it happen before where if I don't leave this room and I go right back upstairs the shortcut uh, and, and I die to the boss or something the shortcut didn't activate for me so uh, make sure you go out there run around a little bit and come back in so uh, up here there's a lot of those little uh, cleaning dudes uh, guys with pokey swords you want to kill them there's a couple blow dart enemies as well so um, just take care of them, and um, I explain later on. I'm go you're gonna see me do it, but I I have the um, communion rune on the max one I believe, so it gives me three blood vials extra aside from the max twenty, which always helps. It gives you a bit more survivability, but um, you're gonna see me kill an enemy, and I'm going to I'm already maxed out on blood vials, and I have a little bit of health taken off me at the moment. You'll see later on. Oh, okay. I have very much apologized for all this yawning, but you're going to see me uh, uh, heal before I pick up the blood vials. That's always like a smart thing to do because the blood vials are going to go into your storage anyway if you uh, already are maxed out in how much you have. So basically, you just heal whatever health you have before you pick up any blood vials, and then boom, there you go. You're going to have um, you're going to have full health and full blood vials. So it's always good to you know, smart little ways of keeping yourself alive in this place. This place is pretty straightforward. As soon as you get past, um, like, all these rooms with the, um, there's another, like, little, not not hidden room, but it's where you get, um, 
another hunter tool, I believe. See, I was surprised that he survived that here. That I was able to repost uh, to uh, visceral attack him, and he straight up dodges. Little nudge to the left. Oh boy. Anyway, so there's another room with like uh, the screaming ladies with their heads in their hands. When they yell at you, they immobilize you. You're gonna see like what I mean. There's a bloodstone chunk right there. But uh, it happens to me a couple times. Luckily, it doesn't. Usually you uh, are surrounded by the ladies with daggers when the screaming ladies do that. Over here, I'm wondering, like, where do I have to go next? I'm making sure I didn't miss anything. Turns out I was just being dumb. So I saw the ladder there. So I was like, oh, yeah, I got to jump out the window over here. But, um, so, yeah, uh, there's a room down here that you don't have to go in. But, you know, there's items. I believe this is where you get the executioner gloves. So if you're going for all trophies, you need to get the executioner gloves because they count as a hunter's tool. Uh, so you drop down the ledge right here, and as soon as you drop onto the um, this balcony here, you're going to be attacked by two gargoyles. You'll have enough time to kill the first gargoyle before the second one comes down. So just you know, hurry up, make sure they don't bug you, kill him. And they do drop stuff. I guess they drop uh, shards. Oh yeah, they do drop. They, they drop twin bloodstone shards, and uh, I believe this one gives me a bloodstone chunk. Yeah, there we go. So in this room, there's the uh, ladies with heads in their hands that scream and immobilize you, and the dagger ladies, of course. So I believe she, this one right here, she screams if you're caught in the blast. Not blast. So I was able to avoid that one. And obviously I'm killing everything. See, if you look, I didn't have a lot of souls when I came here to begin with, or or blood echoes, and I'm already almost at 80,000. I think I ended up at like 85,000. See, I got immobilized here. If there was any of the um, dagger ladies around, they'd come in and stab the crap out of me. So you want to get rid of them if you can, as fast as you can. Now, over here is where I don't like this. There's a dark guy to your right. There's just, uh, two dagger ladies right there. There's another dagger lady and a girl with a, he with a head in her hand. So if you can't get the girl with the head in her hand or get these girls first, you're just going to get, like, straight up wrecked. <laughs> like here I, I try to go after this lady I get immobilized and then a dude with the darts gets me like boom dart yeah see so I back off I'm like oh what the hell with this so I just decide to say screw it and I think I run around this table and just slash him oh I really hate these dart guys they annoy the crap out of me Yeah, so I'm already sitting at 82,000. So I don't know if you want to, if you need to farm for echoes for like, I don't know, if you want to buy uh, bolt paper. Now, I'm going to show you guys a blood echo farming run when I get to the end area of Night the Nightmare of Mensis. Uh, really, really reliable run. Uh, I can't exactly remember how many echoes you get, but it's. It's in the tens of thousands, I, I remember that. Like, you get a, a decently re reliable amount of blood echoes in the Nightmare Mensis run, so I'm going to show you that. That is the Night Garb. Um, I believe the Night Garb is a feminine kind of um, garb. So, uh, in order to progress, you're going to run out here to this ledge. Now, over to um, your right on the balcony or on this ledge, or this archway or whatever, there is a King Coldblood or King Coldblood. It's a, a Coldblood rank 10. As soon as you grab it, a gargoyle is going to try and jump down on you, so you want to wait. There it is, and then just murder it. So where you actually want to go is there's going to be a window over to my right, over to your left if you don't really want the cold blood. You drop down. And in this room, you activate the shortcut and also the way to get to Logarius. And this is where I end up ending my commentary. So thank you guys for watching. Sorry that it wasn't a live commentary. I'm going to make sure that it's recording next time I record uh, my next session. But prepare for another episode of this. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.